Caddis Maximus here, this time with this kind of oddball, old-school wrench. Call it a linear adjustable wrench. I guess that's <laughs> versus crescent wrenches, which have an angled head. Looking around online, there's not... I wasn't able to find out who made this. We just have British Made C2418. That numbers... Uh, there are a few of these that have popped up over the years. They also have this distinctive lines and the little neural nut here. This is just a very old-school adjustable wrench before they were crescent popularized the the angled head style which was apparently invented in Sweden by Bacup. This is the very first kind some point in the probably 1700s or 1800s. I mean this is just the most simple kind of wrench. What is interesting is I have a Buffalo and a couple other brands and what they do is they drill uh, a couple of holes and then broach the center so that there isn't this gap here. They have a closed frame, and then they have kind of a rounded beam. This one, they chose to do it differently, where they used a little wheel cutter, kind of, uh, it wouldn't be a, I guess it wouldn't be a dado cutter, but a little cutter that comes in and then goes all the way down, and so it makes a real square channel, and so the beam is real square, and I'll give them credit for that, is this beam here, it really does want to stay straight. Pretty good tolerances here. I did lube this up, it needs some more. You know, there's a fair amount of adjustment in this tool here. There isn't a hole in the bottom. We can see that this body is indeed forged from that thick forging line. So that is uh, something nice to see is it actually is an old, old school forged wrench. Probably not chrome vanadium. Anyway, and if we look at the jaws, that's what the nice thing about finding this old one is it's really not that beat up at all. Really hasn't had that many quote unquote hours on it. Not a lot else to say besides it's a vintage, forged, British-made adjustable wrench. And the only identifier, once again, is C2418. There just isn't any branding, like on the back of the beam. I thought there might have been something, but find that just a little bit odd. So maybe somebody will be able to tell me a little bit more about these and who exactly made them. But nonetheless, I thought it was a kind of a neat little wrench and just wanted to share it with you all here. Um, just because, oddly enough, for how many vintage, both vintage hand, old school hand tools from the 1900s, 10s, 20s, 30s, etc., as well as power tools, they sold tons of them. But it's amazing how f few are left to the the modern day. It does have a flat back. A lot of these wrenches will have a little bit of an extra extension off the back of the head so they can be used as a hammer. And I'm sure this one can as well, but it doesn't actually have that little extension provision. So anyway, just a cool vintage wrench. And I will give them credit where the moving jaw is actually the upper jaw. Many old school wrenches, you'll people will find it's the lower jaw that moves down the handle as you adjust it. So the larger the fastener you work on, <laughs> conversely, the shorter the handle that you get. So at least in this situation, the handle length doesn't change. And really the big deal, we have like a little proto four inch and surprisingly enough, that's what this is. This would is a four inch wrench, but man, uh, there is a ridiculous difference in amount of material between these two wrenches. That's probably one of the reasons why this style, crescent style or Baco style really took over is because it provides a whole, you know, a large percentage of the strength of a wrench like this while being a, a whole heck of a lot less material needed to make it. But I think that's just hilarious how these are both four inch wrenches, but man, this one probably weighs four times as much as this. Anyway, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.